In this video lesson, we are going to demonstrate how to palpate the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and we're going to demonstrate it for the right side of the body. We have our client, Justin. He's lying supine on the table, and I have him scooted way up to the head end of the table and over to the right side, so my body mechanics will not be compromised trying to lean way over. The sternocleidomastoid attaches on the manubrium of the sternum and the medial clavicle, there is the sternal head and the clavicular head, and they run superiorly, laterally, and posteriorly, and they join together to form one common belly, and it continues running posteriorly to attach onto the mastoid process of the temporal bone and the lateral one half of the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. So, to palpate the sternocleidomastoid, there are two bellies, a sternal belly, a clavicular belly, as I mentioned, and the sternal belly has more of a horizontal, transverse plane wrapping around the head neck, so it is going to be more involved in rotation, whereas the clavicular belly is a bit more vertical, less horizontally oriented, and it's going to be involved more with lateral flexion and there's going to be a sagittal plane component of flexion and extension. So to review for a moment these joint actions of the sternocleidomastoid, because these two heads cross the lower and middle cervical spine anteriorly, they will flex the lower and middle cervical spine, but because they then run more posteriorly, they cross the upper cervical spine and certainly the atlanto-occipital joint between the head and the atlas C1 posteriorly, so they do extension of at least the head at the atlanto-occipital joint. They're both running to the right side, so they both can do lateral flexion of the neck at the cervical spinal joints, and when they pull on the head attachment and they pull it toward the lower attachment here, sternum clavicle, they would rotate the head and neck toward the opposite side, so they're opposite side rotators, contralateral rotators of the head and neck at the cervical spinal joints. So let's first find the sternal belly and then we'll look for the clavicular belly. So, Justin, can you please rotate to the left, your head and neck? And we can see it pop right there. This is the sternal belly of the sternocleidomastoid, SCM, and I can palpate strumming across it. And a strumming across a direction of fibers, a direction of a muscle, is not a little vibration motion like this. Rather, it's a larger excursion of movement where you go off one side, here the medial side of the SCM, up onto the contour of the belly and off the other side. And then I know the exact borders of it. And if at any point I'm not really sure where we are, I could always say, Justin, can you just lift up a little bit in the air? And there it pops it, just even a little less, just to be easier on you. And I can strum perpendicularly across it, going baby steps running more superiorly, and you can take a break. Always give your client a break each once in a while. Again, lift a little bit, and I'm strumming across, strumming across, strumming across with my palpating finger pads until I get right to the attachment on the head, relax, on the mastoid process of the temporal bone, and lift up a little bit, and along the occipital bone right here and relax. And whenever I get to the actual bony attachment of a muscle, I like to palpate it with the client relaxed so I can feel the difference between the hard bone and the softer myofascial tissue. So stay relaxed and then I can feel when I'm on the tendon of the muscle here and it's clearly bone there and then I can find the exact border between the myofascial tissue and the bone. So that's the sternal head, and it definitely shows up with rotation. Let's just show that again. Rotate to the left, and the sternal head pops. But we really don't see the clavicular head here. For the clavicular head to pop, you know, jump out, engage, so we can easily maybe see it, visualize it, but certainly palpate it, what I'd like you to do, Justin, is lift your head up toward the ceiling, and there, now we can see the clavicular head, and I can strum perpendicularly across it and relax for a moment. And 
not everyone's anatomy is always the same. Some people have a very large gap between sternal and clavicular heads, and some people have almost no gap at all. Lift up a little bit again. So here's the gap between the two heads. Make sure that you're finding the lateral border of the clavicular head to find the borders of this clavicular head. And you strum perpendicularly and relax. And again, and you can follow it until it joins into the posterior side of the sternal head and relax down. So that is our palpation protocol for the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the right side.